All right, guys, how's it going? It's October 3rd, and we're going to do the third movie of this month, and it's going to be Cold Fish, and we're trying something new here with Mr. Bones holding the movie, but uh, he's holding it very fragilely, so it could fall during the recording. But anyway, Cold Fish. This is an Asian movie. I think that it's Japanese, but don't quote me, okay? Um, anyway, this movie... I'll probably have to take it from his hands in a little bit anyway. This movie, I just want to give a warning, a disclaimer, because this movie is very, very disturbing and shocking. It's very grotesque in a lot of different ways, and I'm not just talking about blood and gore. There's a lot of sexual content. There's some nudity, a little bit of nudity, but there's a lot of sexual scenes, and, you know, there's rape, there's murder. There's so many twisted things in this movie. I don't even know how this movie came into my life, really. I mean, I kind of do because I was looking at horror movies, Asian horror movies, and I was looking through lists or something, and this popped up, and it had good reviews or whatever. So somehow I wanted to see this, and I've had it for a long time, and I've always wanted to watch it, but I've never sat down and watched it until last night. And it's a long movie. I think it's like 140 minutes, so it's over two hours. And it's definitely an exhausting watch. But I want to say that I did like this movie. I did like it, even though it's so depraved and everything. I've seen a lot of sick movies. This is really up there at the top, though. It really is. Um, wow. Um, I like, I've looked through some comments and some reviews, and people have mentioned Visitor Q. I talked about that before with Takashi Miike, how it's a very disturbed film it has rape and murder and necrophilia and incest and family abuse and everything but uh, also i said that it's very comedic almost because it's so over the top some people will try to say this kind of has some black comedy stuff in it and it does have some stuff that'll make you laugh because it's just so sick and so far over the edge but i think this is a little bit more serious and dramatic and uh, i do definitely think it's a horror movie it basically has to do with some serial killers. I'll try to go over the plot. There's so much that's involved. I know that I'm going to skip over things and miss out and stuff, but... Oh, man. I've been dying to make this video, though, to share this, to, to talk about this movie. Basically, we start off with a family of a husband and wife and a daughter sitting at a table eating, and they like, seem like a normal family, whatever. But the daughter ends up getting a call on her phone from a boyfriend or something, so she leaves like during dinner, and the wife's kind of upset because she puts away food and stuff that's not done. She throws in dishes into the dishwasher. So there's a little bit of a dysfunctional family thing going on there. Shows the husband and wife together, and uh, they're wanting to make love. Uh, well, the husband is, but the wife isn't, and... Um, Basically, you know, I know that I'm going to mix up scenes and stuff, the placement of things, but basically they get a call because the daughter has gotten into some trouble. She tried to steal from a shop, so they have to go to the shop. And um, the shop owner is very mad, and he's like, how are you going to discipline your daughter? Uh, this is like, he's, he's like, I can tell this is her first time. She wasn't very good at it, and this is very serious. You need to discipline her hard. But there's another guy that works there or that's friends with him or something that comes in and kind of saves the situation and he's like you know i'm sure she won't do it again and he's like hey to the father like hey don't you run a fish shop so this yes his family runs like a small time fish shop uh, where they sell fish and uh, he's like well hey don't you uh, have a fish shop like i have a fish shop too like uh i know about you like i want you to come to my shop and stuff and uh he's very energetic this guy is like the main villain, and he reminds me of Gilbert Godfrey in the face, because he's always like smiling, like his eyes closed, and I swear he looks like Gilbert Godfrey. But you'll see him in the trailer over here when he pulls up in like a, an expensive car or whatever. Um, but they basically go to his fish shop. His fish shop is very extravagant, and you know, a lot of exotic fish and stuff. It's like huge. It's like way bigger than their little shop and he's just like going on and on like i love fish and you know i'm so excited to show you guys this stuff and he's like hey like why doesn't your daughter come work for us like we have a bunch of young women here and like she'll she'll work here and she'll stay here and she'll love it and everything and 
you know, it, it working will keep her out of trouble and everything. And he's, he's very persuasive. And his wife shows up there too. And she's a little bit, uh, seems a little bit more creepier, a little different than him. Um, but anyway, he basically talks his family into letting their daughter stay there. We see a flashback somewhere in there of this daughter beating the, uh, the wife because she is not actually the mother of the daughter she's a stepmom her mother her actual mother died i don't remember if it ever explains how her mother died but she's very resentful and she hates her stepmom and her stepmom smokes and she hates the smell of smoke and we see her just kicking the shit out of her stepmom <laughs> like her stepmom's like on the ground she's kicking her in the stomach you know i hate you you're not my real mom blah 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 and I think this is kind of like a flashback in the memory of the husband. Like, so he knows, like, this happened. Like, he knows that there's this rift between them. And anyway, so it seems like a good thing, like, that she's going to be gone working for the fish guy. Um, and the fish guy comes to his shop. And uh, he doesn't trash it or anything. He doesn't talk down about it. He's like, oh, your fish are a lot more lively than mine. You take very good care of them. Who takes good care of them? And he's like, you know, my wife does. And um, anyway, it's just so messed up. They uh, The first time I think that we really see that this guy's a psycho is um, they like go to visit the daughter at work or something, or when they drop her, or when they drop her off to start working there. Um, He's like, basically they send the husband away and they're like, let's have your wife like stay here. We want to talk to her or whatever. We want to show her some stuff. And basically this guy talks to her and um, I guess the daughter talked to him and said that, you know, she was a stepmom and that she didn't like the smoking and everything. So he kind of knows like the insides of the family and like all the struggles that are going on. And he starts talking to her saying, you know, I know that you hide the smoking from your husband and like your stepdaughter doesn't like the smoking, but he's like, here, you can smoke here. This is a smoke free zone. Like, uh, take a cigarette. And he's basically like, your husband's a coward. Like he needs to step up and be a man in the house and stuff. But whatever. He starts talking about all this personal stuff that he knows, but just to cut to the chase, really, he starts slapping her. Okay. And he basically like rapes her. Okay. So like, I don't know where this guy turns into a complete effing psycho. Um, so they end up sending her home, like, I guess, like, she kind of ends up liking it, like, him raping her, I don't know, and she comes to the fish shop with her husband, and she's like, you know, the the, the big store owner wants to see you, and uh, it's kind of like, is it because she's, like, scared of this now, or or why would she not say anything or lead her husband to the psycho that just <laughs> raped her, um, but... He ends up going to him, and he's kind of like, okay, like, I want you to be, like, my partner and stuff. Like, I've got this deal going down and stuff, and I want you to be here. And basically what happens is he's going to, like, swindle this guy out of money, and he's telling this guy to finance him for... They're going to try to sell a fish for, like, 10 million yen or something. <laughs> something insane. And this guy's, like, all skeptical. He's like, I heard... I've read, like, the most expensive fish is, like... 1 million yen and he's like no like this is a rare breed like we can sell this for 10 no problem and stuff so he has the the big shop owner has the little shop owner with him and he has his like attorney with him or whatever and then he has uh, this other guy but anyways like his wife ends up bringing in these drinks or whatever that are like poisoned and the guy who he's trying to get money from they poison him they kill him and uh basically the small shop owner guy's kind of freaking out, like wanting to help him because the guy's choking and stuff. And the big shop owner's kind of giving a speech, like everybody dies at some time, and like today is his time to die, and like there's nothing we're gonna do about it. And basically, after he dies, he's like, "Come on, like help us get this body, like pick up the body now, or like it'll be you." And then from then on, this guy's kind of like under his control, like out of fear, and he's basically like, "You know, I'm gonna hurt your wife, I'm gonna hurt your daughter, like if you don't do what I tell you from now on." And, um, so the big shop owner and his psycho wife 
and the little shop owner, they all get in the car with this dead body, and they have them drive them out into, like, the middle of nowhere to this, like, cult house that has a lot of religious, <clears throat> like, you know, has a cross on it, and has a lot of statues of Mary or Jesus, or whatever. And it's totally... They don't really explain a whole lot of that stuff, but there's just the statues and stuff. And they have, like, a ritual where they light all these candles when they go in there. And there's, like, this back room with the bathroom with the tub or whatever. And they dissect the bodies there. So they take the body in there and they're, like, cutting it up into little pieces. The meat and stuff and the bones. And the gore is pretty realistic in this. Uh, you see, like, bloody skull or whatever. And you see, like, just chunks of meat and stuff. It looks nasty. But, um... Yeah, he's like freaking out. He's getting sick of it and stuff. And um, anyway, like he ends up staying with them out of fear. And they burn the bones and stuff. They burn the bones. They bag up like all the chunks of meat. And before they leave, they kind of they kind of calm down because the guy is like really uppity, 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 uppity. Like, it just brings you along the whole story. He's just like... Um, anyway, when they're done cutting up the body, they're smoking cigarettes. Like, they just got done having sex or something. <laughs> like, they enjoyed it, and, like, now they're calm, like, all of a sudden. And then the guy starts saying, like, uh, my dad used to stay in that room. Like, he used to keep me in that room. Like, he used to do bad things to me. And it's like, okay, is this guy supposed to feel sorry for you? Like, you're a psychopath murderer. Like, you raped his wife. Like, he doesn't know that he raped his wife yet, but it's like, yeah, I don't really have any sympathy for you, bud. You're a psycho. Uh, but anyways, they end up driving him to, like, a bridge over water, and, like, they dump the meat and stuff into the water so, like, the fish will feed it. He's like, oh, the fish will take care of this. Like, well, maybe that's why he loves the fish. I don't know. But anyway... Like I said, the guy's pretty much under his control from then on. The guy that they killed has a brother who has, like, a gang of friends, and, like, they they know, like, something's kind of up, and they're pissed off, and they're calling, like, where's my brother, where's my brother? And he's like, oh, I don't know, like, we've made a deal, and I haven't seen him since. And then he tells, like, this the, the shop owner guy, like, you know, you're going to come up with the story that we're going to tell you, and you're going to tell it the way that we want you to tell it, you know, or else we're going to kill your wife and your daughter, so... They end up convincing these people of whatever that the guy's gone and his lawyer buddy is like I'm gonna rough him up on the way home and we're gonna see like if he'll crack or whatever so his lawyer buddy goes with his wife and the other guy in the back of the car and they have like a driver and the lawyer guy's like I really want him gone like, you know, this isn't a trap or whatever. Like, I want him gone. Like, how do you feel? And, and he wouldn't say anything because he's like, do you think this is a trap? He wouldn't say anything. They got, he got him out of the car, roughed him up. He wouldn't say anything. But later on, and he's like touching on the big shop owner, the evil woman's body and stuff. Uh, so it's like, okay, there's some infidelity there. And they end up having sex later on. And the psycho guy, they end up killing him and find out it's all because of money. So, like, they kill the lawyer, like, butcher him, too. And basically, there's just so much to the story. <laughs> I'm trying to just tell it the best way that I can. Basically, um, let's see. There are some police that approach him eventually, and they're like, um, are you this guy's, like, new helper? Because his last helper, like, disappeared. We haven't found his body. He's like, I hope, they're like, we hope that you, hey, he hasn't made you an accomplice yet. Like, they said there's, like, 30 missing persons around this guy. So it's like, oh, okay, like, he's really notorious. Like, he's killed a lot more people. He, he calls it, um, making them invisible. Like, we're going to make this person invisible. Like, okay. Um... Him and his wife are a psycho team, but the police give him his card and stuff, and the police are going to follow him while they're going to try to hack up this lawyer's body. They're going to try to go back out to that country house, and he knows the police are following him. He's like, you got to lose the police or whatever, so they do, 
they hack up the body, they do it, and basically they go to the bridge part and they make him uh, get rid of the body this time, and there's a little confrontation there where he's like, uh, the crazy shop owner's like, you're going to sleep with my wife now. And he's like, no, like, I won't do that. Like, this is the, the limit. Like, I'm not going to do that. And um, he's like, oh, people like you make me sick. You think you're so righteous. Like, he's like, I know that you wanted your daughter gone because you wanted to sleep with your wife and stuff. He's like, I know, you're, like, you're a deviant and all this. Like, and, um, you know, talking about how he's weak and pathetic or whatever. And eventually, like, he swings on him. And... Um, they get into a little fight, you know, he wants him to hit him more, he's like, oh, you hit like a girl, like, hit me more, hit me more, and he's like, here's a real man's punch, and he punches him. He ends up basically physically forcing him to rape, to sleep with his wife. <laughs> okay, they both, like, team up and, like, make him sleep with her. And then, during the sex, it's like in the back of a car or something, but there's like a pen or something there, and he grabs that, and then he just stabs her in the neck, and then the the bad guy's up in the cab, and he goes up to the cab, and he just stabs him, like, for just a straight while. And there's just, like, blood everywhere. And it's just like, yes, this is finally when they get their comeuppance. And at that point, like, if the movie would have ended, you know, I think that would have been a good ending spot. But unfortunately, it goes on for a little while longer, which I don't think is terrible, but, I mean, that could have been a good ending. Okay, so he doesn't kill the evil wife. He stabbed her in the neck, but she's still alive. But he definitely, he pretty much... He, he almost kills the guy, but he doesn't really kill him either. They drive out to the house, they drag him into, into the house, and he's like covered with a cloth, and he's like, I want you to kill him. Like, he wants his wife to kill her husband. She grabs a TV and just like smashes it like on his head and like bludges him to death. And then he's like, okay, like you're gonna chop up his body and stuff, and, and she's gonna cut it up, and he's basically like, you're my, you're my woman now. Um, you do as I tell you. Oh, so then he goes back to the shop where his daughter is, and he basically drags his daughter out, and she doesn't want to come, and he smacks her and stuff. He basically grabs her, makes her come, and they go back to the house, and it's like back to the eating scene. And it's like, okay, we're going to eat and be a family, like, by force, okay? Like, he's supposed to be, like, the man now. Like, but he snapped, and... Um the boyfriend or whatever calls again and she's like I'm leaving and then he fo he follows her out there and he like kicks the boyfriend's ass and he like basically kicks her ass and drags her in back into the house like knocked out um and I think like later and she's like knocked out in the room and later on like he wants to sleep with his wife or something and she doesn't want to and he like ends up raping his own wife like in front of his daughter then he drives back out to the house, uh, I think he called to the, the house where the body's being chopped up, and I think he calls the police to meet him out there, and um, she, she chopped up the body, and she's burnt some bones, and he basically, he kills the evil wife, but there, there's a, it goes on for a while, like, she wants to make, she wants to make love to him, and she's about ready to kill him, but she lays down the knife and kisses him, and they're, like, quarreling in the chunks of meat and blood, and they're just all covered in blood, and that's just, like, when it's, like, fully, like, over the top, it's like, oh my god, there's, like, they're, like, trying to have sex, but, like, trying to kill each other, and they're, like, slipping around in, like, another guy's entrails, and it's like, yeah, it's so gritty, and that's the point where it's like almost comical. It's like, this is just so much. But it's like, there's a hint of realism to it, and it's just like really disturbing too. So, anyways, the police end up coming out there with his wife and his daughter, and he's like going to the house or whatever. He's covered in blood and stuff. He's sitting in a seat. His wife comes up to him. He kills her. I don't really know why, but he kills her like in front of his daughter. I'm thinking maybe he did it to make his daughter happy or something. I don't know. Um, but he goes up to his daughter and I think he kind of like pokes her with a knife or something. She's like, oh, like you're hurting me. That hurts. And she's like, he's like, you want to live? And she's like, yeah, I want to live. And he's like, he's like, life is pain. And then like he slices his throat and he dies. And then his daughter's like, he's dead. He's dead. Yay. And then that's how the movie ends.
So does it sound messed up? Trust me, it is. Watch it, because I really don't suggest this for the weak of heart, because it's long, it's very demented, but it's also really good, and there is some good music in it. There's some piano, like some beautiful scores, and... You know, in the big shop owner's fish place, there's kind of like some Hawaiian music, and there's some really nice shots of Mount Fuji. There is some nice uh, Japanese night driving scenes. Like, it's filmed really good, and like the story's really good. So, <sighs> but man, it's exhausting. Is definitely up there with the most disturbing movies. Like, I didn't really know what to expect. I knew it was supposed to be bloody and stuff. I was thinking like a Saw movie, you know, where the people are going to be hacked up and there'll be blood and stuff. But I didn't think it would be so psychologically because you meet this guy and he's just like the best guy. Like, he's got the biggest shop and uh, he's got a nice car and he's rich and stuff and he's so accommodating and he wants to help out and he's just such a good guy. But he's such a twisted freaking psycho. It's like, think of the Silence of the Lambs, how Hector Lamb or Hannibal Lecter, like the psychological horror in that, but that looks like Sesame Street compared to this. Even though, you know, Silence of the Lambs is definitely like a better movie. It's a classic, and it's just Anthony Hopkins and everything is great, but, I mean, this isn't a bad movie, but you got to have a taste for this stuff, and it's not something I'm going to want to watch all the time, but I'm glad that I've seen it. You know, there's parts where he really loves uh, the planetarium, and, um... He loves the planets and stuff, and that's kind of like his happy place. And, you know, there's some beautiful scenes there where he, like, you know, he kind of thinks of that and puts himself, like, in this happy place. Um, I think on the film cover, it's kind of a call to Straw Dogs, which is similarly disturbing because this is the main good guy, basically, that snaps. Or that's, like, the bad guy. But this guy has glasses. His glasses actually never break in the movie, as far as I remember. But if you look at the movie Straw Dogs... <laughs> you can see the similarity. Okay. Actually, there's a scene where the bad guy takes his glasses, like when I told you when they get in the fight at the bridge, he throws his glasses into the water. He's like, oops, bye-bye. <laughs> um, there's so many quotes and stuff and things that I could say so much more about this, but I tried to tell you the story. Um, this movie is sick. I might read the back of it to you, but let's see if there's anything on here. You can see the house with the cross back there, and they're burning bones. Okay, and they have like all these candles that they light. They didn't really explain anything like that. A Takashi Miike inspired gore fest. There's the good guy being grabbed by the bad guy. And there's all the girls that work at the shop. You can see that it's got some selections to win in some festivals or whatever. I don't know really what that means, but let's see what it says. When Shimoto's teenage daughter is caught stealing, and Shimoto, Shimoto is the good guy, a generous middle-aged man helps resolve the situation. The man and his wife offer to have Shimoto's troublesome daughter work at their fish store. Shimoto soon discovers the horrific truth of the seemingly perfect couple who forced him to get his hands dirty in their brutal business inspired by true events and that's something i want to look into too i don't know it's got to be very loosely based on something but it says it's supposed to be inspired by true events cold fish is a blood curdling suspense drama that unveils the underlying insanity of an ordinary man and i mean you feel the insanity you feel like the shoes that he's in basically well He's going through all this, and it's depressing, it's disturbing, it's hard to watch. You really want these people's comeuppance. You're like, I'm going to keep watching this until those bastards die, because <laughs> at this point, like, they're so sick, and they've, you know, they've done so much wrong and tormented these people so much, like, they need to die. But eventually they do. Unfortunately, though, the guy commits suicide in the end. But yeah, Straw Dogs... Another great movie, Dustin Hoffman. This has to deal with rape and a guy getting pushed over the edge. I think maybe multiple men rape his wife. I'm not sure. But they move to a new town. Everybody seems kind of friendly. But yeah, they end up taking advantage of his wife. And 
uh, they're basically going to try to come in and kill him or something. He snaps, defends himself and his wife. So. Man. It says, How far will you be pushed? Coldfish. I really did not know what I was getting into watching this. But, yeah. If you want to see some of the most demented cinema that you can watch, then this is one of them. But like I said, it's good. There's, you know, there's, there's some beauty in there and all that horror. All right, guys. That's going to be it. Number three, October 3rd, Cold Fish. So... God bless, guys. Thank you.